let's jump from that totalitarianism to Soviet totalitarianism and Eastern, European, Eastern Europeans' handling of it. And if you, Eastern and Central Europeans, if you look around to the newer members of the EU and NATO, what is your general consensus how these societies, in comparison to Polish society, deal with the legacy of being a satellite of Moscow? Well, of course it means that we are more sensitive, for example, to the kind of state version of history and state ideology that Russia has, seems to have um, uh, founded in the last few years. You know, we get nervous when a new, you know, the, the one Pole we are not proud of is Felix Dzerzhinsky, the founder of NKVD, okay? And, um, and when a new statue of Dzerzhinsky is put up in Moscow, we get nervous for understandable reasons. This sort of thing uh, is something that we watch with more sensitivity than others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's an old saying, tell me who your heroes are, and I'll tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. And there are Russians that we admire. Andrei Saharov, um, to some extent, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, um, many, many others, but they don't seem to be the heroes, the official mm -hmm. heroes today anymore, and that's a shame. Is Polish society aware of the fact that people like, you quoted him, uh, President Lech Wałęsa or Pope John Paul II have hero-like status in German society and that Germany is extremely grateful to the contribution that Solidarity Movement and the Pope in the 80s made for the advancement of what later would become freedom and unity for all of Europe? We are very glad of that, and we are very glad that after, after some time, but finally we have an agreement to, to commemorate solidarity here in, mm. in Berlin. I think that's a great idea. You see a link between a communal reading of the past and the ability to project European interests with one voice in the global arena. Is that it? Yeah, I do, because I think that... Um, you know, often we talk politely about unification of Europe, but I think many people in Western Europe don't really see it like that. They see us, the poor cousins, joining with you, the mainstream. Is it not a stereotype of the past? You see, I think the unification of Europe is often perceived somewhat like the unification of Germany. Mm -hmm. Okay, a kind of, you know, one part simply dissolving and becoming like, uh, like the major part. And, and that, I think, is number one, a pity, and number two, will not produce the result that we want, which is to say a, um, a consciousness of Europe's um, entire history, because we feel that our narrative of struggle for liberty in the second half of the 20th century is as real and as much deserves to be a part of the European canon as your history of living peacefully and prosperously under American protection. But who is reputing the, that? <laughs> who is denying that? It's not that anybody is denying it. You don't feel Eastern Europe felt it really in their bones. Then that what was being done to the Chechens in the 1990s, which was a very cruel war of subjugation, was like the deportations of the 1940s. In other words, a story of, of, of something close to genocide was, was repeating itself. I think the moral revulsion mm -hmm. would have been bigger. Mm -hmm. Maybe Poland and Polish society is the one which has had the biggest burden of 20th century history, um, except definitely European Jewry. Um, if you think and of Belarus, the actually, if you if you counted victims of the Second World War on a per capita basis, mm -hmm. then to the territory of today's Belarus suffered about 25% losses. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't want to count victims. I wanted to get to the point of saying that even in more recent history, um, very simple, in 1989, Poland had three neighbors. None of these neighbors exists now. The three neighbors were the GDR, Czechoslovakia, and the Soviet Union. Instead, now Poland has seven neighbors. Of the seven neighbors, none existed 20 years ago. That maybe sheds a light on the dimension of historical change. But all of them are better than, in, than those three were. Every single one. <laughs>